We're going to bring you a story that already has a lot of people talking, arguing, and firing back. An investigation of ourselves. That investigation is something journalist Diane Sawyer once reported on ABC's Primetime Live. We've heard about a disturbing trend in the news business. Local stations and newspapers that cave in to big advertisers who don't want tough reporting done about them. There used to be much more of a definitive line between the sales department and the newsroom. According to the chair of the Lipscomb University Department of Journalism, and communication, Alan Griggs. My philosophy was to try to work with the sales department as much as I could, but drawing that line, that distinct line at the point where I felt like that it would interfere with our news product or compromise our objectivity in some way with certain clients. Griggs, a former longtime news director at WSMV TV in Nashville, admits he had run ins with the sales department who would quite often push the limits. Their age old pressures. I see today that those lines have been crossed and have been blurred to a great extent, and much to my chagrin, it's more of a given today than it ever has been. Advertisers' pressures on journalism are still very much an issue. Former president of the Pointer Institute for Media Studies, Dr. Karen Dunlap, cites examples when what appears to be a news interview is really just a promotional story. I've seen that happen, and I think, well, at least they're not using news people, but then they are. So it wasn't that long ago when that was just out of the question. You would not present something that appeared to be an interview, and it was really just a promotional device for some company. Dunlap, now a professor at Tennessee State University, cites another issue of what she calls walk-away pressure. Which has always been there. It's more relevant now because when advertisers walk away, there's not enough to replace them. Some walk away because they hated the news media anyway and had to put up with them in the past, but they don't anymore. Does TV news management ever tell its reporters to pull a story because it may hurt the bottom line? Here is an exchange between former consumer reporter David Horowitz, who was once interviewed by Chris Wallace on ABC's Primetime Live. He says he saw it firsthand at Los Angeles station KCBS when he did this story about a couple's car that caught fire when they slammed on the brake. Then what happened? Then my phone rang. Horowitz says a station executive told him the next time he wanted to do a story involving local car dealers, check with management first. He said, because we're in a position where we can't afford to lose ad dollars. What the Pointer Institute's Al Tompkins hears very often is journalists saying they could go after a story, but frankly, it's just not worth the fight. For investigating that car dealership or investing in that restaurant chain or that retail market or whatever. And so sometimes what happens is, is that we throttle ourselves as journalists not to go after a story because we know all the problems that are going to come from it. The other thing Tompkins sees when watching TV news is sponsored content within a newscast, something that was once ethically taboo. What they're buying is an adjacency to a topic. I get that. But you do wonder whether the viewers get that, whether the viewers wonder whether or not your content isn't for sale. Tompkins says news directors will tell you that, in his words, car dealerships are the bane of their existence. That's the number one consumer complaint that consumer departments get, something having to do with a car dealership. And car dealerships traditionally are in the top three advertisers at any television station. So it is a built-in friction that comes with news content. Radio and TV stations make a lot of money on political commercials. Al Tompkins says conflicts may arise about the content of a political ad, so he questions what should stations allow and how should reporters cover candidates, many of whom advertise on their stations. The dirty secret is, is that in most of these places, advertising is so hard to get because these television stations run out of advertising, they're not going to pull the ads. They need the time, so it doesn't matter if they're happy with you because they're still going to buy the time. Another high-profile case to shed light on this issue involved correspondent Mike Wallace's interview with tobacco company whistleblower Jeffrey Wygand. This excerpt is from a follow-up report on CBS when 60 Minutes was ordered to pull its interview on the tobacco report. 60 Minutes represents to people, at least from my point of view, is that we're the people that are supposed to stand up and do those things and challenge those things. And when we cave in to corporate lawyers who are saying, no, it's just too dicey, we could lose billions of dollars here. Edward R. Murrow would have never done it. We're impressed with the importance of this medium. We shall hope to learn to use it and not to abuse it. In the A&E Network biography of Murrow, when a journalist is at a crossroads, the question is asked, what would Murrow do? Murrow's famous speech to television news executives many years ago still rings true. This instrument can teach, it can illuminate, yes, and even it can inspire. 
but it can do so only to the extent that humans are determined to use it to those ends. Otherwise, it's nothing but wires and lights in a box. Dunlap compares those who set the standards for news versus some of today's journalists who may not recognize that promotion within a news story is a problem. So the first thing I would think Merle would do and others in newsroom is to be the mentors internally to raise the questions. But there ought to be some voices saying, wait a minute, doesn't this affect our credibility? Should we be doing this? I'm Terry Likes. You're listening to Tennessee Matters on the Tennessee Radio Network.